scientists at Lamont started collecting these cores, really not even being able to predict, you know, in the late 40s, early 50s, how important this collection would eventually become and how many ways it would ultimately be used. The director of the laboratory at the time had a, had a uh, policy that uh, no matter who was on the ship, uh, no matter what they were doing, they would take a core every day. Sediment cores give us a record of what has happened in the ocean in the past. Imagine you stuck a straw, a scaled up version of a straw, into the bottom of the ocean and then pulled it up onto the deck of a ship and then extruded the sediment. That would be a sediment core. So we're getting cores all over the place. So that's why we could do so much work in the 70s that we had this collection. of. For much of the 50s and 60s and 70s, Lamont had two research vessels at sea, the Vima and the Robert Conrad. On the Conrad, it was poetry. These uh, coring crew had this down pat, a few hours to rig the core, hour trip to the bottom, hour trip back up. And then the core was extruded into a wooden trough on the tar paper, so you got to see it instantly. So I got to memorize the cores. I got to, you know, just see how the sediments changed as we moved up through the Red Sea into the Mediterranean. It was, uh, it was just an incredible education. In those days, uh, there was no satellite navigation, so you, you did uh, celestial navigation. It really was a time of exploration. Uh, nobody knew what was on the bottom of the ocean floor, uh, what the sediment distributions were. I mean, this was his coring device. This was called a Ewing piston. Core. He knew that these cores up on the highs, rich with all the microshells of the organisms, would contain the best record of history. We'd get the day by day, year by year, thousand year by thousand year record. And the sedimentation rates were high enough in the Mediterranean that we could see changes that occurred within a decade. Every cruise uh, found something new in those early days, and so that was really, it was very exciting. There's so many clever ways that scientists can use the sediment from the deep sea floor to learn about the history of the Earth. Ewing knew well that there was a climatic history. Now what they thought then was that the Ice Ages was four major pulses of glaciation and deglaciation, each lasting several hundred thousand years. And the advantage I had in the Mediterranean is I had ash layers so I could determine the age of the volcanoes that erupted those layers and use those ages for the ages in the sediments to see, along with Martin Strick here, that this was a Milankovitch cycle. And Jim Hayes then developed that with Embry and Shackleton. Studying Antarctic cores, uh, I had to work out a way to tell time in the cores. I had to look, look, look for ways to, to measure changes in climate. I have to do a lot of things for the first time. At the time, there were maybe 40 theories of why we had ice ages. This theory that uh, is called the Milankovitch theory was one of, of many, but uh, when we were able to match the periodicities of the changes in orbital geometry with the periodicities in the climate, that was rather convincing that that theory was the right one. So there's a lot of research and debate in the scientific community now about how El Nino is changing. And one of the best ways to understand El Nino in the past is to look at records of ocean variability. We went on a cruise on, um, on the Marcus Langseth to take sediment cores from the central Pacific due south of Hawaii, right along the line islands, right in the middle of the Pacific, as far, almost as far away as you can get from land. So it's a location where the ocean surface temperatures change most because of El Nino, not because of other factors. La Manta, some of the only cores from this location prior to our cruise are from early, early cruises by the Vima and the Robert Conrad. Since coming back and bringing the cores back to Lamont, we then started chemically analyzing those samples to tell us about the time that's represented in the sediment cores, how fast the sediment's accumulating, kind of lay the groundwork for more detailed investigations that are gonna tell us specifically about El Nino variability and climate variability. Typically what a scientist does is they look at all the data about the collection and they find the core they like and then they send us a sample request. Probably the oldest cores go back to the Cretaceous about 100 million years ago. We have extremely good records, and the, the number of cores we have here now is about 19,000. It's very hard to go out to sea nowadays. The funding's not there, the ships aren't there, and this resource really serves a global community right now.